I'm trying to batteries. The heck? Can't see anything. Well, lived a good life. Got about a year out of it. But as you can see, the screen's not functioning, so time to upgrade on to something different. And this is what I decided to upgrade it to. It's a uh, Gen Zace iMars D300 AC DC dual mode charger. Features a G-Tech smart charger. So if you have their Gen Zace batteries, it's like the Spectrum system and the Traxxas system where you can hook it up and it'll start doing things for you automatically. We get inside the box. Mm. We get your instruction manual. And look at this little thing. This must be the charger and this is a lot smaller than I thought but it seems like it's gonna be a workhouse and the fact that you can charge this DC makes it even better here we have it next to my ISDT mark 2 that I used to use this is only can charge at 200 watts at 12 amps while this one can charge at 300 watts at 16 amps between both channels this has AC only but this is an AC and DC charger all right, we have a box label of accessories. Let's see what we have in here. Looks like the power cables. It's just there's two sides. Seems like it comes with two EC5s, two EC3s, and two Deans. So that's useful for that if you have those type of batteries. You have your power cable inside the box as well as a USB to USB. So I'm not sure what that's used for. But let's power up this thing and see what it's talking about. So now you got into your charger, you get into your settings. From here, you can see that you can select multiple things from balance charge, storage charge, discharge, and charge. So most of the times you want to select charge. Then you select your battery type. LiPo, Lion, LiFe, Nickel Metal, and LiHV. In this case, we go to LiPo. The target voltage you should be selecting usually is going to be 4.2. And if you do balance, it should automatically do 3.8 for you see 3.8 but in this case we're going to go to charge and then you should be able to select your cell count for your battery that you plan on charging at that time and then your target current so when it comes to the current you're going to want to divide the milliamp hours by a thousand so if this was 1000 milliamp hours i would charge this at one amp but since this is 300 i would charge this at 0 0.3 amps in this instance for this battery here. Now say you had a battery like this, 5200. You would divide that by a thousand, and in this instance, divide that by a thousand, and it would be 5.2 amps. And then you would start it in that situation. Now when it comes to charging, you got your balance ports here. This is your power. And that is your balance port. This charger, you can either stick it directly into it, like so. And as you can see, it should show the voltage of channel B. And this is the battery parameters right here. 3S, 4.16, 4.16, 4.16. It's important to note, if you are going to be using the Gen Zace chargers that have their little smart technology, you might not want to use the balance board here because for the next step, I'm gonna be showing you guys, I'll be using the balance board since I don't have any batteries for this. So I have these balance boards from my uh, older charger I'm gonna be using here. Stick this in here, like so. And this one in here, like so. I like to use the balance boards because it gives you a little bit more space for the batteries to just be away from the charger and not be plugged directly into the charger. I'm gonna go ahead and plug these batteries in. Which one I'm gonna charge them? I'm gonna be charging this, uh, 600 milliamp 2S LiPo on this side. Plug that in there. And then to be charging this new battery, I'm gonna plug that, it's a 2S LiPo as well, into this slot. And now you can see the voltages of both batteries and the cells and what they equal to. 3.7 for this one. And then wait, channel A, 3.7, B, 3.7. I'm gonna give them power into that one there. And into that one, and you're gonna plug these 
into your batteries. So that one goes into there. And then this one will go into that connector here. Boom. So now they're both hooked up to the balance cable and they're both hooked up to the balance boards. Everything's good to go. Another good thing to know with this charger is while it's charging, it tells you your voltage is per sale. It also gives you a resistance. Having your resistance is good in knowing whether you have a good battery or a bad battery. So say you had one with 3.7 ohms and you had one with 50 ohms. That would tell you an indicator that maybe one of your cells is going bad on your battery. and gives you your voltage, your wattages, the temperature, and everything as well. Same thing with this side. And then the ohms in the battery, and as well as all the watts, temperature, voltages, and all that good stuff. Now I'm gonna show you the max that you can charge with this charger between both ports. So I've charged this before safely at 2C rate, and I'm gonna charge this at about eight amps. To show you the cutoff is 16 amps between both channels. So for channel A, I'm gonna go here on A, hold it down, and I'm gonna charge this at six amps. I'm on eight amps. Start that one. And then charge your B, we'll go to 10 amps on this side. And it's gonna to top me off at 16 total. Even though I'm putting 18 amps between both sides. Wait for it to show up. Fan starts to kick on. Oh, I guess you can charge it more than 16 amps, guys. That's shocking to me. That's 10 on one side, 8 on the other. I'm going to see if I can bump this up to 10 as well. Let's see what happens. Well, um, I guess... I was wrong. These are both charging at 10 amps on the independent channels. So I don't have any batteries to charge them at 15 to see because I don't want to blow my batteries up in front of my face. But so far, they're holding up to 10 and 10 so far. Ah, screw it. I'm going to take a chance. Let's try and see if we can bump this up to 15 on this side. Wow. Well, this battery is complete almost. So I guess you can possibly charge each side up to 16 amps independently. Because right now, it's at 24 amps between both channels. So I don't see why I couldn't hit the 32, but this is almost a fully charged battery. And that's surprising because the old charger I had, it would not do this at all. It would not charge at each like this. It would cut off at 15 total between both channels. So, so far, I'm a big fan of this charger here. So I think this will be a great replacement charger for what I had before. And as long as you got you a good charger, and you take care of your batteries, there's really not much to worry about LiPos. The main thing that I see people do is they'll leave their LiPo in their car plugged in and that can kill your battery for one and it can potentially cause a fire hazard. Two, I've seen people turn their car on, it'll get low voltage cut off, it'll start to go on slow-mo, stop. They'll turn the car off, turn it back on and run it again, which in turn is killing that battery even more potentially creating a fire hazard. And another thing I've seen is people just not properly charging their light bulbs. If you properly charge your light bulbs, don't charge and go, I'm gonna go grocery shopping, don't do that. You wanna be in the vicinity of your charger while it's going. Should something go up in flames, you can be able to react. I've never had anything happen, and no one close to me who I are no RCs has never had anything major happen with their light bulbs. You just gotta be able to be aware 
Now, I understand there may be instances where it's just like a one-off, and that that is something that rarely happens, but for the most part, at least from my knowledge, you just got to take care of your light bulbs, get you a good charger, and other than that, you should be good to go. Light bulbs will last just as long as you take care of them. And one more thing I've seen people debate on, storage charge or leave them fully charged. Personally, for me, I'm a person who uses my RTs frequently, so if I know I'm not going to be using them within a couple of weeks, I'll put them in storage charge because those batteries are going to sit there for a couple of weeks, and I'd rather they be storage charged than fully charged. Now, I know if it's going to be less than that, I'll leave my batteries fully charged because there's nothing worse than somebody hits you up, let's go bash, and like, ah, oh, I need an hour to charge my batteries. Like, no, it sucks. So I like to keep mine pretty much fully charged if I know I'm going to be using them within a couple of weeks. So that way they're ready to go. And I haven't had no problems with my ohms going higher, my resistance getting out of whack, or the battery cells getting out of whack. As long as you just being aware of which ones to charge, which ones you've used before and cycle them all out, you're good to go. And that's my opinion. You do what works best for you. So that's all I got for you. And all in all, this Gen Z's charger for, what was it? 129 or something like that it's a, it's a it's a steal of a deal and it does way better than this isd mark ii ever did hopefully i get more than a year out of this one because i've only got a year out of this and that's i don't know thanks for sticking around and peeping out the video uh tell me what you think about the charger what charger you got and uh you think this is a bargain let me know your thoughts and ideas down in the comments below thank you guys for tuning in